Hello and welcome to Ear to the Ground. This week I'll be finding out more about these very different looking cows. They originally hail from Austria but are creating something of a buzz in the Irish dairy world. Ireland being a big beef producing country, to have a herd of Flecfi in there completely changes the game. Darrow will be in Cork where tests are underway on a type of seaweed that could dramatically reduce methane emissions from livestock. We found this species of seaweed that reduces methane in cattle by over 90%. And Ella is in Longford on the hunt for some of Ireland's rarest cattle. It's like finding gold, isn't it? It's precious because there's so few of them. There are over 1.3 million dairy cows in Ireland. The vast majority of them, those big black and white Holston Frisians that most of us are familiar with. But a growing number of farmers are moving away from those more traditional breeds into something a little bit more unusual, like here on this farm in County Leash. Gerard and Angela Brickley farm nearly 80 acres. They milk a herd of 65 Austrian Fleckvie cows. They're what's known as a dual purpose animal, equally valued for their milk and their beef. The Brickleys spent most of their working lives abroad. When they eventually came back to Gerard's family farm, their initial setup was a beef enterprise. A retirement into full time beef farming was what you did. I'd prefer to call it a midlife career change. <laughs> <laughs> but about Six or eight months after I made that move, uh, we re-examined the finances and said, um, this ain't gonna work in the long term. And uh, in the horizon, about 18 months later, we could see that the milk quotas were going to go. And that was our opportunity, so we decided to move. Why wasn't it working? We were, if I could say, we were making a lot of money. We were getting some very high prices for our stock, but we weren't really making any profit. The side of the business that we were in, pedigree breeding, it is specialised and we were, we were pretty well up there at the top of it, but um, the expenses were just too high. When she decided that you were going to go dairy farming, you didn't just go down the traditional route that other people went down. No, we had a year to research what we wanted to do and I suppose we just checked out a lot of different systems and spoke to a lot of dairy farmers in, in fairness here who were very transparent with their setups and that as well. <laughs> Somebody asked Jared at one stage, is, is it a PhD in dairy you're doing? Because he did so much research. The result of all that research was the purchase of 15 heifers from Austria in 2015. These Fleckvie, or to give them their full title, Fleckvie Simmental cows, might have been a maverick choice for dairying in Ireland, but the Simmental has been a popular beef animal here for decades. Fleckvie is actually, the, as far as I know, the most populous breed of cattle in the world. Uh, they're number one right across Central Europe. Austria, Southern Germany, Czech Republic, Poland, Switzerland, all those countries. Well, I'm looking at the animals at the ladies behind you and they don't look like dairy cows. They do look like, like beef cattle. They are the original Simmental. When Simmental came into Ireland in the early 70s, Farmers bought them only for the beef side. So they bought the beefiest ones and they bred them for the last 45 years only for a beef purpose, ignoring the amount of milk they have. In the homeland of these cattle in Austria and Germany, uh, they still breed them dual purpose. So primarily milk, but also having the beef element in them. As a couple coming to dairying later in life, the Brickleys have adopted as many labour saving measures as possible. From the beginning, they've used a robotic milker, which means the cows come in to be milked as they please. Angela, from her, uh, when she was an orthopaedic nurse in Beaumont, she said she always knew the dairy farmers when they came in. Because their hips and knees were gone. <laughs> and pr primarily from standing on concrete for a lot of the time, for long periods of time. But also I just thought from an age pr profile as well, I didn't particularly want to stand in, in a dairy at six o'clock in the morning milking cows. Because they milk all year round, there are calves born on this farm both spring and autumn, meaning there are a lot of hungry mouths to feed. An automated feeder, which registers their ear tags, makes sure that each calf gets just the right amount of milk. First thing I normally do is just check that I have enough milk powder in, 
in the hopper here to make sure that they have milk for the day. And then I just checked the computer here to see that they've all drank. So I can see one of them hadn't come in early this morning, but he's just in now and she's starting to drink. There's 21 at this moment in time in here. So this is great in that you see straight away if calves haven't fed, you can get them, get them down. And it's useful then even to check their temperatures. So that if you get them in, you can just check the temperatures so easily there as well. On most dairy farms, male calves have little or no value. But because the Fleckfee is a dual purpose animal, their bull calves are highly prized by the beef sector. I would say the purebred calves, if we were selling them, uh, probably 350 to 400 euros at a month old. And when the cow is finished her life as a dairy cow, she's a valuable asset as a beef cow also then. Aside from the financial side of it, there's, there's welfare issues as well, aren't there? Absolutely, absolutely. And Ireland being a big beef producing country, to have a herd of fleck fee in there that's producing extra money for the dairy farmer, but also producing a really valuable product for the beef industry, it completely changes the game. At the moment, the Brickleys keep the cows housed all year round. Even though it's more expensive to do this, they feel it works better for the system they've adopted. On the continent, most of them are indoors 24 seven. And we looked at the health of the cows and everything else, and it didn't seem to impact them negatively. So we just decided we'd keep them in and bring the grass to them or the silage or whatever the case may be. And it seems to be working well for us. We're planning a simple grazing system for next year, but they will still get a lot of their feed inside. I think if they get out, get a little bit more exercise and get more air into them, I think it'll help them. The Brickleys import Fleckfee semen from Austria to inseminate their own cows, but also to sell on for use on farms throughout the country. I've been palpating to find the cervix. It's very small in, in this particular one. Uh, well, normally it would be small in a heifer. So I've just gotten through the cervix and this little wire now pushes out the semen once I'm in the exact right position. So you know by touch that you found the right spot? Yes. How likely is this maiden heifer to get pregnant from that AI straw? The normal success rate with uh, insemination is something around 60%. With heifers, you'd expect a much higher pregnancy rate. Uh, 80, 90 percent with first service. She's in good condition, she's not over fat, uh, she's growing and being fed well, so I'm hopeful. Farmer and AI technician Damien Aylward is one of the Brickley's customers. Are you seeing a growing interest or a growing demand in this breed? There is a serious interest and in growing demand. The people that do go about it really see the benefits of it. Will you see, stick with Fleckfee? Uh, of course, yeah. I couldn't see it any other way because you have, you have three values. You have your, your milk, your calf and cull, cow. You can't really go far around, so it's kind of a, a no-brainer. The Fleckfee certainly seems to have an awful lot going for it. Could it be possible that in the future we may become as accustomed to seeing them in our fields as we are the Frisian Holstein? I'm old enough to remember when Shorthorn were a predominant breed, or, or almost a predominant breed here, and people changing over to, to black and whites in the 60s. So change happens, and you know, those who survive are, are, are those who adapt to it.